it's Deborah Atkinson, host of the Flipping 50 TV show, the Flipping 50 podcast, and the author of You Still Got It, Girl. And I am so often asked by women who have knee issues and getting up and down off the floor is not comfortable, it's not possible, but they still want to work their core, what they can do. So I've got a lot of great ideas and a lot of things that you probably already do that actually help. And here's the key. Priming is really important. So if suddenly you realize what you're doing is working your core, you may actually get better results. As simple and as too good to be true as that may sound, it's very true. The message you put in your brain, your body will come along for the ride. So number one is pushing. And that includes everything. A really heavy shopping cart full of kids or groceries pushing that through, now you're not going to get a lot of resistance. So what else comes to mind? A vacuum cleaner and a lawnmower. If you have a self-propelled, turn it off. Makes your, the self-propelling part of that lawnmower and you'll be doing a lot of core exercise. They now make up activities in the gym that mimic those kinds of activities. Pushing a sled across the floor. Who knew, right? So go out and mow your lawn. You're actually doing a lot of good for your core. The other option is pulling. That's number two. So pulling your vacuum cleaner back, you are engaging your core, you can't help it. Pulling the lawnmower back, if you have to walk back and go back uphill, there's a lot of core in that. So it's simply activities of daily living. And then absolutely, you could mimic that somehow, even at home. So let's go on to some things that are a little bit more exercise oriented and a little less functional daily activities if I have to do that. Three is rotate. We're gonna rotate with a weight. So I'm just gonna show a weight that has something to it, but you might wanna try a medicine ball, a dumbbell, or a really heavy book will work also. But we're gonna put the feet about hip width or slightly wider apart. I'm gonna take this weight, bring it out. Not so my arms are locked, but I have a long lever. And then what I'm gonna do is rotate. And I'm gonna keep that weight right in front of my belly button. So if I can't turn my belly button and point that direction, I'm passing the direction that I need to go. So it is two things. This is the rotation, but it's also because this weight is out here and it's a long lever, there's a lot of core work going on right here. So you might find the weight is heavy enough that you're actually working your shoulders too. Find a good compromise where you're not stressing up here and getting into your neck, but you are able to engage and use the core. Number four is a squat. So although that seems like it's a lower body exercise, the core really is between the knees and the shoulders, of course. But when we really want to focus on this, what I would do with this is move it up here. So it's away from my body, not as far as it was in this last exercise, but it's right here so that I have to focus a little bit more on what's going on at my core. Now the heavier this is that I can still handle with good form, the more I'm gonna feel my core. Now what you might see sometimes is somebody coming up and then pushing up. Now that too is gonna engage the core but be careful if you have shoulder issues, don't go there, okay? Number five is doing plank. And I just said, don't go to the floor. So what I mean by that is find a chair or tabletop or couch, firmer the better. This is not extremely firm, but it'll do for right now. And then come into a plank position. So if you need to do this on a wall and your shoulders need a little less weight, That'll work as well, but I'm going to give you a bonus here. So although this is number five, your plank in the chair, I can actually lift my legs. That's going to make it a little bit more core work yet, because while I lift one limb, it's like a three-legged stool. Everything else has to work a little harder. My core has to pick up the slack. Now, pressing the weight. Same what I just used, holding it right here, and what I'm going to show you is that I'm not leaning back. So I've been on my knees, my tailbone is tucked under, and if I take this weight in and out away from my body, again, when it comes out here, my core has really got to engage. 
it's much harder. So if you've ever been in precarious positions where you have to bend over, you reach and you grab something out of the trunk of your car, those kinds of instances, you're really using your core. Those are also the ones where if your core isn't strong, you tend to strain your back. Good practice right here. Number seven is doing some standing knee chambers. Now what's a knee chamber? So a knee lift, if you were doing aerobics from 1970 or 1980, this is what it looked like, right? It's not that. What I want you to do is think about kicking so much that you feel this glute engage and it's like your knee is gonna kick someone out here. And if you're thinking that you're actually hitting through something, you're breaking through something with your knee, you have to brace with your core to do that. So I can make this a lot of work and hold and push. Now if I hold this knee up and simply go back and forth on this one leg, it's going to feel like two things. A lot of glute work right here in this cheek, but a lot of core work here. So notice there's not a lot going on from where you are, but there's enough that you can see I'm really moving. Press, 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 press. So it's a lot of core work without folding at all. So you're just staying nice and tall. You need to do a standing, or let me show you a boxing move first. So if you've done any boxing videos with me on YouTube, or you have any of my digital products, you know I love boxing because it's great for arms and it's great for core. And we engage the lower body too. It's a package deal and you're getting your cardio at the same time. So we're gonna bring a jab and across. Anytime I bring an arm across my body, I'm working a little harder. So it's a jab, push, out, push, this. And then you're always gonna do whatever you do on one side, on the other side, because you've gotta work the obliques here and here, both sides. That's again, bracing. Okay, now, standing. You need a wall for this. So I'm gonna move close to this wall. There are two exercises that I'm gonna show you here. And one is in the lunge position. So don't get nervous if your knees don't like to lunge. You almost need a doorway or you need a corner of a wall. And a partner works too, but my partner is not gonna play very well today. So if you have another person doing exactly this, like a mirror to you, that'll work. So what I'm gonna do is take my hands here against this corner and I'm just simply gonna push with the back of my hand, trying to push that wall over. While I'm doing that, I have to brace myself or I would be falling over. And then I would go and on the other side, do it to the other hand. And I do it with both legs forward. Last but not least, stand close to a wall. And I don't want you to tip over. That's the trick. I'm gonna take one foot and push as hard as I possibly can. Not into the floor, it's actually lifted off the floor slightly, but I'm pushing as if I'm pushing this wall over. Now I'm gonna feel a lot of work through this hip, but in order not to move, not to fall over, I'm bracing right here, and I'm still breathing, right, because I'm talking, so you don't have to talk out loud or count to make sure that's happening for you too. That's core, this is core. Remember, and if this is engaged, this most likely is two. That's it. Ten ways that you can do core not on the floor in a standing position. And I'll see you on the flip side.